Don't give up on God, for He won't give up on you. He's able, God is able to do just what He says He will do. Oh, He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, for He won't give up on you. He said, Oh, God is able to do just what He says He will do. He's gonna fulfill, He's gonna fulfill. He won't give up on you. He's able.
are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you think, all that you ask for in the name of Jesus. He can never fail. He can never change. He's there. He is able to do for you whatever you request for, whatever you think, whatever you need. He can never fail to give it to you. He is ready to answer all your prayers. He is is ready to listen unto your your questions. He will answer you. He is able. Lord is able. Jesus is able. able. For the Lord is able. Let us sing it once again. God is able to do just what he says he will do. He's gonna fulfill. He's gonna fulfill. Every promise to you. Please don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Oh, the Lord is able. He's able. He's able. He never fails me, Lord. His love never runs out on me. for joining us today at the worship buffet, the lunch hour live at Beulah City Church we bring greetings from Pastor Samuel Nwamanya and uh, tonight uh, just as you enjoy the session of worship uh, feel free to send in your thoughts on who is a worshipper that's our question on the panel today and the next few minutes we will be discussing that by the word so feel free to send in uh, your views, your advice your question your answer in the comment section and god bless you feel free to subscribe like share this link and please comment may god bless you be blessed as we worship Thank 
Laissez-moi gloire Jaya Mirakwe Tewani Yomwe Afayo Jendinga
manye mti woli sebo Nyamba manye mti woli Mugambe Nyamba manye mti woli Kuhuli emu chifu manye Bamba tire sebo Bulire dobo zinyo Oyunge mitima Moses said, if I have found grace in your sight, no, your presence is just not enough. I need you to go with me because if you will not move, we will not move. So help me know you who are here. Help us know you who are here. Help me know, help me know you who are here. Let it be your prayer tonight in your office. Help me know you who are here. There's somebody you've been struggling with depression. But the Lord is here to heal your heart. Somebody, you've been having worries about your finances. But God is here to assure you, I will not forsake you. I will never leave you as orphans. You never change 
yesterday to down forever nobody is like you you are the same you are the same yesterday to down forever nobody loves me like you you never share you never change Yesterday, today, and forever Nobody is like you You were the same You are the same Yesterday, today, Nobody loves me Nobody loves me like you
That's the kind of love that has found me You never hands out on me That's the kind of love that has found me yeah. You never hands out on me That's the kind of love that has found me yeah. You never runs out on me That's the kind of love You had to say Yesterday to them forever Nobody is, nobody is like you, Lord You never change the God of Jacob, I said And I pray
Father, we bless you for this afternoon. Yes, Lord. We bless you for the wonderful atmosphere you've provided, God. Amen. We could stay here and be here and bask in your glory. But, Father, I hand over this next session before you. Amen. That as we discuss your word, may your spirit teach us the deeper mysteries of the Holy Spirit, the deeper mysteries of the kingdom. The deeper mysteries of the dimensions of worship. May you teach us tonight, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Yes, our beloved viewers, uh, right there is the question Who is a worshiper? Welcome back from that session. We were worshiping. You can take a leaf from that. 
but we want to go deeper into who is actually a worshiper. Does everyone who sing, is everyone that sings a worshiper? Or, so we want to go, is it all about singing? Is it more than just that? So we want to go deeper into who is a worshiper. Uh, yes, we will be reading your comments. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in, Agnes, Ruth, uh, Gloria, Edgar, Nora, Fiona, Douglas. Thank you very much for tuning in from wherever you're tuning in from. Uh, feel free to send in your comments. Uh, who is a worshiper? Yes. Um, yes, uh, tonight with me, I have the beloved BPM with us. She's Amen. a worshiper. So she will be telling us who is a worshiper. And uh, we also have uh, Evangelist Frank in the house. Yes, you can give him uh, an applause. He's joining us tonight on the panel to answer who is a worshiper. And this is the worship buffet panel. Yes, I want to start with the evangelist. Why me? Uh, because maybe the, the government will. <laughs> The fivefold ministry, at least we have evangelists. Amen. Uh, and, wow. But I, I want to know who is a worshiper. Wow. Yes. In a few words, uh, thank you so much, uh, Minister Baton. I am so honored and humbled for this wonderful session. The question is who is a worshiper? Uh, whenever I meditate upon this question, I feel like I want to pray because a worshiper is someone who is unique. When you, when you begin to med meditate upon who a worshiper is, because Baton, I was reading the Bible and I have read it many times, but I've never seen anywhere in the Bible where God is seeking a prayer warrior, where God is seeking an usher, or seeking anybody else, but he says, I'm seeking a worshiper. He seeks worship. So it means there is something special about a worshiper. And in case you have your Bible there with you, you can go with me in the book of um, John chapter 4. And that's where I'm going to rely tonight. John chapter 4. We can be begin from verse 23. Uh, so John chapter 4 and verses 23 says, Yes. But the hour is coming, yes. and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. Mm. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. Amen. Amen. Should I continue? You can first repeat that and they hear. But the hour is coming, yes. and now is mm. when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. Amen. I, I never wanted to begin with this scripture because it is now bringing the whole depiction of it all. Like the true worshippers are worshipping him in the truth and in the spirit. Number one, why? Why should a person worship God? You know, many times we mingle this with the materialistic things. That why should a person worship God? Many people think that we worship God for what he has done for us. Okay, that is true. You can worship him because he has given you something. But according to me, I would like to worship God for who he is. Because he's all. He's everything. That's why the Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 4, from verses 10, that the 24 elders, every day and night, they cast their heads down. They bow down every day. Why? Because he's worthy. Number one, he's worthy. He's everything. Like, God is an eternal oracle. And Amen. so, the reason that's why he created us is that he was seeking worship. Mm. Uh, I, I, I would like to share this, by the way. Many people say, but can I be a true worshiper when I'm a sinner? <laughs> Sister Patience. Can you be a true worshiper when you're a sinner? In one word. Uh, in, there is a difference between being a worshiper and, and being a sinner. And being a sinner. Uh, in the Bible, yes. we have, uh, we see uh, the prostitute. Yes. The prostitute, she was a sinner. Mm. She was a sinner, but she did something that worshipped the Lord. 
Yes. You get mm. there you can be a sinner but it can't stop you from worshiping God. From worshiping God. Yeah. And remember when you worship God, it changes you. Worship can change you. Wow. It picks wow. you wow. out of wow. that wow. sin wow. that has been on top of you that has been covering you that people have been seeing you through. So and worship can bring out. a transformation in a person. Yes. Mm. Oh wow, wow, wow. But then are we sinners? Um that goes uh, a long way. So I want to first elaborate very well what is worship. Mm. Worship can be defined in about three words. Yes. One, worship is submission. Because when someone says your majesty, they are worshiping that person Indeed. because they submit under the majesty yes. of that person. Yes. And uh, worship is service. Mm. You must serve. You must give something. Mm -hmm. Yes. You must have a form of sacrifice that you give up. Mm. And that is service. You must serve he who is greater. So that is worship. You cannot serve to who you do not reverence or submit to. Yes. And the third, the third description would be that uh, it is reverence, which is like respect. Yes. And that brings me to who is a worshiper. Mm. Meaning a worshiper is this person who submits under this authority, mm. serves this authority, wow. and reverences this authority. Wow. So, can a, can, are we sinners? When you are a sinner, you are a worshiper. But who are you worshiping? Because it means you submit to a certain authority. Mm. It means you serve a certain authority. Mm. And you reverence that authority. You get my point. I get it. That's why the Bible sometimes says that you worship in vain. Mm. Because you are worshiping what you do not understand. That's why Paul says, you worship a God you don't understand. Don't understand. I am here to tell you about this unknown God. Are these people worshippers? Yes. Are they sinners? Yes. Um, button. But they are not true worshippers um, that the Bible is talking about in John 4.23. A question. Yes. Uh, like for instance, um, from committing adultery today, is there still a chance for me to worship God tomorrow? Like I said, I want to give you an example of uh, the worshipper in the Bible that the Bible yes. gives us. And that is David. Mm. The Bible says, I found a man after my very own heart. Yes. We know David killed people. Mm. He even killed a man just to get his wife. But he's still a worshiper. Why? Because even though he erred, he still submitted to God. And he still served his God. To a moment that he was ready to receive any punishment given to him for the wrong he had did. You get my point? Yes. yes Some people yes. don't know this, but actually David lost his son. Mm. The one that Bathsheba first gave birth to Solomon is just another one. But the first son mm. had to die. You get my point? Yes. Some people don't know this. He fasted, hoping perhaps grace would be availed. But guess what? Grace was already there. David is one of the few people in the Old Testament that actually experienced grace. The grace was availed to him because the Lord spared his life. Because not many were lucky to, to, for God to spare them mm. after having done such a, yes. a thing. But uh, the Lord showed him grace. But you see, grace does not take away the repercussions of sin. What grace saves you, saves your soul. Because the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit has sealed, has put a, a holy a seal, seal. On, our, on our spirits. Mm. Your inner man. Yes. Even Paul says, Alexander and Himenaeus will I hand over to the devil. You get my point? Yes. Because they have failed what to change. But that at the day of redemption, their souls may be redeemed. Uh, because now, why, why I was asking that, there is this, um, you know, in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verses, uh, I think, uh, you know, in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, it talks about the fall of man. Mm. And so when Adam had sinned, the Bible says that he hid himself due to the guilty because of the iniquity that was upon him. Mm. And I'm seeing God coming down and he's asking the other question that he was asking. Adam, where are you? 
Mm. How can God again seek me when I have sinned, but he's still seeking me? Mm. Why? He still needs my worship. Mm. Yeah, mm. I, I'm not defending people who sin, mm. but I'm saying there is a chance out. Yes. There is a chance out. You can still worship God, even though you may not be perfect as though you ought to, but you can still worship God. Because it becomes worse when you leave church. Like, I'm, I'm a sinner, I'm not worthy, I'm not what. And then you don't attend church, you don't attend, attend fellowship. You think you are not worthy to be in the presence of God. It gives me something to think about. Yes. Last night I was listening. I, I normally put on my audio Bible mm. and listen to verses as I'm going to sleep. So I was listening to the songs of Solomon. And then I realized that the relationship a worshiper has with the Father is one that spouses have in between them. Yes, yes, he actually yes. says, I am a jealous God. Mm. You shall not make any other gods except me. except me. What happens when they make carved idol? Does he chase them away? He urges them to destroy the idol and come back to him mm. because he's a jealous God. Wow. I know ladies are the most jealous creatures we have. <laughs> they be like um, and Jagarawa against the car. That is true. You get my point. Absolutely. What if he cheats? Mm. Do you leave him? If he can show that he can leave the other, other woman and stay with you, you are fine. The problem comes if he wants to keep both of you. You get my point? <laughs> yes. So, the relationship a worshiper hey, yes. has with the father is that of a spouse. So, who is a worshiper? Worshiper is a spouse. Wow. With the Holy Ghost. With the Holy He's Ghost. a spouse with Jesus. Wow. He's a, spy, uh, a spouse of divinity. Wow, 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 wow. You get my point? Wow. True, many times we error, but he still calls on to us. Well, but we have talked about sin a lot. What do you think can take me from the place of worship except sin? Okay, so. I always tell people that yes. worship is an expression. It's, an expression. it's feelings. Mm. You must put your emotions yes. into everything you do. Now, it, it, it helps the singers, mm. the musicians. I want to tap, tap in that because it works both ways. Yes. Whether they are in secular or in church, they must put the emotion mm. in the song for the yes. song to actually have impact. But worship goes beyond the song. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. Everything we do, mm. you have to put that emotion Yes. You get my point. Yes, yes. That's yes. why a woman will wake up in the morning, cook for the husband, mm. take care of the children, and do chores. And even though she may complain about it, she will do it consistently for years. Because mm. it's an emotion, that love. If, trust me, if she has been complaining that, ah, Rajim of Fumbira breakfast, let mm. another woman cook for him breakfast you will know that she's like, please let me do my chores. Yes, exactly, you get my point. Exactly. Because it comes, so what makes us leave the place of, of worship, worship is our very own expressions. The moment you become part of the equation, you lose it. That's why the man says, it's all about you, mm. Jesus. It's not about me. It's not about so. The moment it becomes about you, mm. But you see God in me, but you see Jesus in me, but you see I did this, you see I. There, you are starting to leave the place of worship because you are going into another realm called self-worship. Oh, yes. You see, God created us in his own image and people don't understand this very well. Mm. But the reason why God deserve, wants our worship more than the worship of creations and the, the oceans, because they all do worship. Why? But why, he prefers why, ours why because us? we are in his image, meaning oh, that glory we to have God. the ability oh. to attract worship to ourselves. We carry so his just DNA. imagine someone who can be worshipped like Nimrod. Mm. If he chose to say, now I worship God. Wow. That is the highest form of what? Worship. Of worship. Someone who has a worship attributed to him, if he gives you the worship, mm. it's different. You see, when, I, w w w w w w when someone comes and says, Brother Frank, I am very proud of you. I mean, you bless me. Mm. They're giving you a form of worship. You're like, glory be to God. Yes, yes, but yes. when someone of a higher status, Pastor Samuel comes and says, Evangelist Frank, you bless, you bless me. me. Ah. It hits different. It hits different. <laughs> because 
he carries a certain weight. Yes. Indeed. So you carry a weight that other creations do not carry. Glory That's why the Bible God. says that creation awaits for the manifestation of the sons of mm. God. Because when you manifest yourself as a son of God, then you have become a true worshiper. And then creation can submit under you. Indeed. Because now you are a true worshiper. worshiper. So yeah, that, that, that's... By the way, what you're talking about is very true. Because not all people who worship God, like if you worship God in the truth and in the spirit, you are not normal. There is something different and special upon you. Because yeah. I read about Angel Gabriel. When Angel Gabriel came to the father, to John the Baptist, eh, mm. the Bible says that when he told him an instruction and, and uh, this man was like hesitating, he told him, how dare you speak that against me? I, Angel Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. Mm. So it means there is something special about people who stand in the presence of God during times of worship. Mm. You know, I was hearing, uh, I was watching Pastor Ben Hain. I was with patience. And Pastor Ben Hinn was like, you know, this business of saying worship leaders is, is nonsense. That's what he was saying. Mm. That worship leaders, what, what, leading worship. He said there is no worship leader. That the leader of worship is the Holy Spirit. Mm. So when you come here and you begin to worship, you're not leading worship, but we, are, we, we, we join you in worship. Yeah. But the leader of worship is the Holy Ghost. And I was like, oh God, is it? That now, even in prayer, there is no prayer leader like you lead the prayers. Mm -hmm. The it, Holy Spirit teaches us. It is the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So many times, as to why we cannot worship God for long hours, is because we are worshiping God. We want to take ourselves, as you said, that it is about us, it is about self. But if we say it is about the Holy Spirit, that's why people say that, but me, I can't worship God in my own words. Why? Because we are not led by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So I want to add you, brethren. Whenever we are worshiping God, we should be led by the Holy Spirit. Yes, that's why he says he's seeking God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. But first Meaning wait. that you have to first be in spirit oh. for you to be led by the spirit. And if you are in the spirit, then everything that you portray is truth. Not facts, but wow. truth. Wow. Because the fact is you may have slept on a hungry stomach. Yes. The fact is you may be not having rent. The fact is that and that may not be going right. But the uh, truth is mm. he is God. He is still Elohim. He is still. Yes, so uh, I, I want to, want to read question. some comments here. Be before, before, mm. I want to ask a question, but don't be angry with me. Mm. And don't be angry with me even after this stream. <laughs> <laughs> even after the stream, don't be angry with me. Mm. How can I be in the spirit? So, to be in the spirit is very simple because, like I said, the very yes. first form of worship is submission. Yes. So, the Holy Spirit does not imp does not superimpose Himself on us. Mm. He says, "I'm knocking at the door of yes. your heart. If you will open up, I will come in and dine with you." Mm. So, how can I be in spirit? I must be able to open up those doors of access. Wow. How? One way we do that. That's why people fast. Because sometimes our flesh is very strong mm. and it will not allow us to submit. Yes. That's why some of the things Jesus says, they will not go away except, except by prayer and, and fasting. fasting. Why? Because sometimes your flesh is too strong so and you cannot worship in spirit in oh truth. Oh God. You know the truth, but the spirit is lacking there. So you must tame it. Because your body is very strong. Mm. So you must go into prayer. You must go into fasting. fasting. You must go into reading the word of God. Wow. To wow. sing in Psalms. Now you see, the prophet Elisha mm. needed to give a prophecy. But if you look at the situations that were around, you don't blame the man for being stressed. Mm. Everyone is looking for him, to him to an answer. But he, mm. he says, please bring me someone who can play the harp. Spirit-filled. Mm. Skilled. Because they need to usher me into the spirit. They need wow. to put away. That's why we need the worship team. That when the worship team comes and they are in spirit and in truth, mm. they will usher in the congregation mm. and they dispel all those other thoughts, all those distortions in their realms so that they can come to the same realm wow. where they wow. can receive wow. from the spirit. Wow. Amen. You get Amen. 
Yeah. So we have some comments here. Mm. Yeah, Brother Wanda, Wanda Dennis says that um, he gives us a scripture in the book of Psalms 150 and 6. There's everything that has breath uh, and everything that is capable of praising. And then you, then you and me have to prove we have dominion over all that praise. She's speaking about dominion. Yeah, the dominion we were talking about that when the sons of God come into manifestation, dominion has to be expressed yes. Yes. because you have acknowledged who you are. Mm. Continue to say that that means uh, man has to portray God's image in him through worship. That's when you are able to break into another realm where God deals, that is spiritual. Yet other creatures cannot access that realm but only you and me. And that is, therefore, worship is an exceeding intimacy with God. Thank you very well, much for brother that. Brother talked about the intimacy. Mm. By the way, intimacy is an ingredient mm. in worship. It is a key ingredient. Yes, yes, it is an ingredient. You have to be intimate to a certain level. Sister Patience is so quiet. I don't know why. Mm. Worship. Yes, so I, I have a question. Yes, please. If worship is not a song, it goes beyond singing. Yes. What other ways can we portray ourselves as worshippers? Because someone out there watching us mm. says, I feel the heart of a worshipper, but I don't have the voice to sing. Mm. How can they worship God? How can they worship God? Worshiping God, it's not only in singing, through mm. singing. Yes. yes. But it is, I don't know, expressing yourself to God. You can call him wonderful names sweet names call him what you feel like he is to you mm. I can say God you are holy mm. why? because he is really holy mm. I've seen doing him wonders it's not only because I have to be seeing him doing this and that mm. but because he is actually holy yes, yes. he is worthy wow there are some names that you just say, I, God, you are worthy. Just a name. You mm. feel like, really, I've worshipped God. <laughs> By so the way, that means that someone who can't sing can actually write a song. Mm -hmm. yes. Because they're yeah. expressing their exactly. feelings. Exactly. They can actually write songs. Yeah, people so do write. So out there, you are watching us, and you are probably like, I have all these words, but I just can't put them into a rhythm. Just write just them write and write a song. God will bless you mm. and um, someone will be putting melody to that. Mm. Secondly, um, when I was reading a book called Living a Purpose Driven Life mm. by Billy Graham, yeah. this man put some statements about worship which almost distorted the church. He was like transforming worship into acts that you can worship God by doing acts, by doing things. Mm. Like even helping people is worship. As yes. you were saying that it is submission. Mm. So doing some things to people, mm. it is worship also. Like you help someone who is in need, mm. someone who, who is sick and you, you help them, you are doing some extraordinary worship. And so many people think that it is all, all about worship because for me sometimes I break into tears when I'm worshiping God. Why? When I say he's worthy, I feel in my inside he's beyond worthy. Then I look for words, how can I worship God? I look for words to express my, like, to express my explanation of how God is. God, you are holy. I feel he's beyond the holy. I end up crying. <laughs> yes, so. I want, uh, our time is first spent and we want to wrap up, but I want to leave with this expression that Jesus lives in the book of John chapter 21 mm. from verses 15. Now, at this point, Jesus has resurrected and he finds his disciples had given up. How many of us give up sometimes and we feel like, I thought I had purpose, yes. but it seems I was mistaken. I wasted a lot of years in church. And some people are like, I've been living in church for some time, but I'm still the same way. And they yes. give up. But there is a reason. When Jesus comes, he, say, he says to Simon Peter, do you love me more than this? What he's questioning right here is the intimacy of the worship of Peter. Like when you worship me, do you believe that you give me a sweeter aroma than this? Because like I said, worship is a feeling. So he says, do you love me? 
more than this. Yes. Meaning that when you look at your worship, do you think it's a sweeter aroma than this? So is worship a competition? I like to think it is. Yes. I want to please my God more than you can. I will try my best. Wow, wow. It's not about you. Mm. It's not about me. It's about him. Who will make him happiest? Wow, wow. That gives me the distinction between Abel and Cain. Mm. Someone said, I know we have been doing this as a tradition, mm. but I need to go on an extra step. Yes. I need the fattest. Mm. You get I need to do it for him. He needs to feel this sweet aroma. And feel pleased. So when Jesus asks, do you love me more than this? Mm. Simon Peter first is puzzled. He's like, yes. I mean, yeah, you know. You know that I love you. Mm. So when someone asks you, patience, are you a worshiper? Like, oh, come on. Everyone knows <laughs> that. I am a worshiper. <laughs> you get my point? Yes, exactly. They ask you, Frank, are you a worshiper? Ah, come on. Who doesn't see me on the stream every day? Mm. I'm there praying. I'm worshiping God in tongues. And then Jesus says, feed my lambs. Now, this is the, the only time I see God include an out, a different party into worship. Now, he's not, it is he saying, feed my lamb. So when you say that in the acts we do, it means that when you take care of his lambs, you feed his people, you, you love your brother, you, you do that to your neighbor, that good thing, mm. you, you keep an eye out. Yes. Feed them, tell them about the word of God, encourage mm. them. That is a form of worship. Form of worship. You get it. And lambs are young. So the first level he says, please feed my, my lamb. Again he asks, you love me. This time round is not comparing it to the others. It says, do you love me? That's the second time. The first was like, do you love me more than this? Mm. The second time is as, do you love me? And now, Peter is confused because he just answered that very question. He says, you know that I love you. So Jesus says, tend my sheep. So, it means that as a worshiper, I was telling the worship team that uh, the way you dress, mm. the way you talk mm. to people is a form of worship. Yes. Because when he says, tend my sheep, mm. that's why he says that he who makes a young one stumble, you are not a, being a very good shepherd. You are not tending to the sheep. It's not the responsibility of the pastor. Mm. It's the responsibility of a worshiper. Do you love Jesus? Tend to the sheep. By the way you dress, by the way you talk, by the way you conduct yourself. As you are speaking, something just came to my insight. Mm. That even these other activities like preaching, like everything, they are all together for the goodness of worship. Yes. Because when we preach, we get more converts. What are we getting? More worshippers. You, you are feeding his sheep. You are yes. tending the sheep. You, mm. you, you are catering for what belongs to him. Amen. Amen. That's why it is very important that as we preach, when the man sang a song, mm. ministers and the Theophilus, mm. like, when I stand to preach, who do they see? Mm. He's saying, I don't want to forget why I'm standing here. Yes. I don't want them to hear of the eloquence of my speech. Mm. I don't want them to hear of the abundance of my scriptures. I want them to see of the abundance of your grace. Wow. I want them to see of the abundance of the knowledge of you. Wow. May they know you more and more. Because at the end of it all, the goal is to feed the sheep, to tend the sheep. Mm. So as we conclude, there's that time, of course, yes. Do you love me? Now listen to this expression. Mm. Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? How many times have you been offended in church because they tackled your area of service? When they say, Abebe, you must see many people to say, call a little. Abe media. Abe media. I am in media, and sometimes we get grieved. Yes. But the point is that we have gotten to that place where he's weighing your worship. 
Because if you are getting aggrieved, it's now becoming about you. True. It should stop being about you. Mm. It is all about him. Anyway, he says, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus says, feed my sheep. And he adds, most assuredly I said to you, when you were younger, you guarded yourself and walked where, where you wished. Mm. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will guard you and carry you where you do not wish. Now just look at that. I know we know the other scripture of when Ariyo Muto na kola yanga Muto neka tiinguze. This time around says when you are younger, you go wherever you want to do. You do whatever you want. Yes. But when you get older, someone else will tell you what to do. Will make you do the things that you do not wish to do. Mm. That means that as your worship grows, there comes a place where you have to step out of your comfort zone. Yes. Many times we are going to be forced to be out of our comfort zones because we are now older. When you were younger, you sing every song and you can get away with it. But because you are older and you have more scripture basis, mm. there are some lyrics you cannot sing. That is it. true. I, I, I'm not saying but trust me, there are songs I cannot sing because I do not agree. I no longer agree with them with the lyrics yes but trust me they are gospel songs you get my point there are many many of them many. Because, but when we were younger you can get away with anything as long as and boy gospel and secular and you still get away with it yes but when you're older mm. you will be forced to delete some of those songs hey, so secular music is not good it's not oh. because our god is a jealous god oh because of time we want to wrap up yeah, you so cannot serve two masters. You mean go. I go to hell if I listen to secular music? Hell is a bit of an overstatement. But <laughs> we will get back to that tomorrow. <laughs> tune in at the same time. Oh. And uh, we will be going deeper About onto mm. who is a worshiper Amen. and what is worship. Wow. Tomorrow we'll be wrapping it up. If you have any questions, please send them. Keep sending them on our YouTube on our email at uh, buildthecityministry one at gmail.com and uh, we will be very glad to answer to the best of our abilities may God bless you Shalom Amen